Welcome to Boats on TV. We're in the historic town of Cowes on the Isle of Wight for the Red Funnel Easter Challenge. There are 83 boats entered for this regatta. The large fleet shows that this event has not lost any of its popularity. There are over 20 different designs or brands of yacht which will make for some interesting comparisons, especially this being a Rolex Commodore's Cup trial event. And the competitors are geared up for a great season of Rourke racing ahead. This is the 17th Red Funnel Easter Challenge and event manager Janet Grosvenor explains how this occasion has developed. Well, the Red Funnel Easter Challenge has kept growing because it was so popular as a training event. It's the beginning of the season, people can come out, they can get training, they can ask questions. It's all done, shall we say, with outside the rules, and it's got more and more competitive, which is great. So the standard has gone up, but people still view it as, I can learn something. Day one of the Red Funnel Easter Challenge saw strong northwesterly winds gusting over 40 knots. The fresh gale combined with spring tides to whip up the Solent into a foaming and confused state. The Royal Ocean Racing Club decided to postpone racing for one hour in the hope of getting some racing in, but the conditions failed to improve. And by three o'clock, PRO Jamie Wilkinson called off racing for the day. Whilst the competitors were stranded on dry land, Boats on TV took the chance to interview some of the competitors about the event and their plans for the season ahead. Okay, we're talking to Jody Slater and Vicky Lincoln. Jody, can you tell us what you're doing here at the Red Funnel Easter Challenge? Sure, we're uh, here to sail on Far 45 Fractious. We were hoping to do some high quality training this weekend, get the manoeuvres really slick at the start of the season, but unfortunately the weather has thwarted us somewhat, and uh, so we're here doing some uh, coaching sessions and uh, enjoying the joys of cows. Fantastic. Vicky, can you tell us what your goals are for this season and what's your big event? There's a lot of racing on this season, very busy um, season coming up, but the biggest thing for us is the Women's Open Keelboat Championships, which is on the 7th and 8th of June, hosted by the Royal Southern in Hamble. It's promising to be a really fantastic weekend, 100% female crews, so it's a really worthwhile event to go to. Fantastic. There was no racing on day two either, but the Rourke had another plan in place. Legendary coach Jim Saltonstall led a team to give a coaching session in the Cows Yacht Haven Event Centre. Morning. Stand up. Sit down. Too slow. Stand up. Clap. Sit down. What was that for? That was for our new Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Edward Warden Owen. Nice to have you on board in a very important position. Uh, ladies and gents, uh, cut a short story long, so to speak, as I like to do as a person from Yorkshire. We've got a, obviously a situation on our hands where we thought better use our time. Now, to that end, what we thought we'd do as an input as coaches, uh, as we look at who's uh, available here on stage today, and uh, we thought we'd grab this opportunity to uh, actually address initially the big picture in our sport and what we believe are the important areas where you as either an individual piece of human fat uh, or as a team can improve your personal performance. Now, my mate Mickey Broughton there at the back uh, is here as a meteorologist and uh, equally, uh, Mickey, do you want to join us up here? Yes, good man. Round of applause. This young man is famous, and um, certainly as regards the subject of meteorology, uh, can have an input for us maybe uh, as this session rolls along. Now for me, oh Mickey, 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 take it steady. <laughs> Mickey, can I give you the first Easter egg for your troubles? 
A great pantomime moment there from Mike Broughton, livening up what was already a fantastic chat from legendary Jim Saltonstall. After the briefing, we spoke to North Sales' Neil Mackley on more serious matters. And tell us, Neil, exactly who are you here with at this competition? I'm here with uh, a boat called Blondie, which is a King 40. It's in the Irish Commodore's Cup team. And our goal here, this is our first weekend sailing. We sailed last weekend for the very first time. And the, the idea of this weekend is to learn the boat, develop it, look at the sails, and move it forward with the goal to winning the Commodore's Cup in July this year. It has been blowing dogs off chains here for two days. There hasn't been any racing. Hopefully there's going to be some, but right now there's only one thing left to do. Let's join the crews down at the pub. OK, well, two days without any racing. There's only one thing left to do, guys. What's that? Hey. <laughs> and how long have you been in the pier view, Trav? Too long, too, too long. <laughs> so we're sitting here with the Blondie crew, the Mills 40, Mark Richmond will probably be doing some helming, is that right, Mark? Yeah, if I don't have too many of these tonight, yeah, we'll be on the helm tomorrow. So are you on strict instructions about when you've got to be home? Being, being fed by uh, 10 o'clock this evening, hey lads. Not which bed, just make sure <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the uh, the crew we've got in front of us here. Uh, what can we tell you? Can just take one look at them and you can make your own judgment on it. <laughs> And uh, tell us a bit about the boat, how big she is, etc. Um, which is a new uh, Mark Mills design King 40. And um, unfortunately, we haven't got much time to get out and uh, sail in her this weekend. But uh, hopefully, we'll get a day out tomorrow and uh, we'll see what she's like. Day three of the Red Funnel Easter Challenge, and we finally get some racing. The weather has abated, but only just enough to get some quite stunning solid racing. Boats on TV took a trip to the combat zone, in the air, on the water, to bring you all the action. And there you can just pick out the long legs of John Wyatt in the Boats on TV chopper. OK, here we are on the, on the first race of the Joining us in the Boats on TV studio is Rourke Chief Executive, Eddie warden Owen. Louis, the conditions are pretty tough out here, actually. It's blowing probably 23, 25 knots from the west. Tough conditions for the crews, and it, uh, I think it shows not easy. We're looking at the start of the IRC Super Zero fleet, and this is the first time that five TP-52s have raced in the Solent. And here we have three of the top TP-52s making their way to the top mark. We have Stuart Robinson, stay calm. Henry Lloyd, cutting edge. This is a new team and they seem to improve as the weekend went along. I was pretty impressed with what they were doing. Nicholas Zenstrom's ran with a top-notch crew of America's Cup and Volvo Ocean Race Sailors. These TP-52s have been supercharged. The bowsprit gives them another 30 square metres of spinnaker and they explode downwind.
in the Super Zero fleet, Nick Lutz Shockwave has an excellent first beat, closely followed by Stuart Whitehead's Rebel racing for its first time. and Ran is literally lighting up the Solent at warp speed downwind. And this is where you can see the problems when you get a compressed fleet. They have to pick their way through the windward boats. The speed differential is huge and the potential for a collision is pretty high. watching the Russians coming down the leeward mark. They look like they're in a bit of a mess here. Lots of people on the fore deck trying to get the spinnaker in. They've got a small opportunity to get it in. They could, they could do it. No, it's gone in the water. Now they've got to jive back and go around the leeward mark. And this is a pretty tricky maneuver, especially with the spinnaker in the water, getting all over the boat. And they've got a bonner around the uh, forestay. You'll see when we pan away what the bonner is all about. Yeah, I think while we've got a moment with the Russian crew, just to explain, a Bonner is named after a bowman called Nick Bonner, who is famous for having completed this manoeuvre for the very first time, but I doubt if he's very proud of it. As you can see, the top of the jib's twisted. They're going to have to tack away to try and get that out. It's a pretty ugly manoeuvre, actually. It could even be a double Bonner. Oh dear, that is probably race over for these guys. the class zero fleet at the bottom mark with shockwave getting it all wrong that is not the way to drop your spinnaker that's probably a better way of getting a couple of ton of mackerel as you can see rebel gets taken out by shockwave here they can't round the mark shockwave in the way but Sean Froelich's Exabyte 4, with an early kite drop, stays out of trouble, rounds the mark, and passes both of the boats. Jerry Otter has chartered Erivale 3, the Kerr 39, and has done extremely well this regatta, 
pushing the two Irish boats, Blondie 4 and Jump Juice Hard. Erevale 3 will be competing in the pre-selected English team for this year's Rolex Commodores Cup. It's very early in the season and even a top class crew on the TP52 RAM can't get it 100%. Here you see them rounding the top mark. The spinnaker doesn't go up cleanly. It's a slight slip by the uh, mid bowman and looks like the bowman stepping on the sail. It looked like the, the sheet was also caught. It doesn't get to the top of the rig before the bands explode and the kite is about a meter short on halyard. There's no way they're gonna get that up going down the run. It didn't matter in this race but in a highly competitive field, that could be the difference becoming first and even in the top five. Louis, I think you're being a bit harsh on them, actually. In light of the conditions we've got, which is pretty windy, you can see how fast that boat is going now it's up and running. And these boats are playing downwind. It doesn't need much wind, but it's windy, it's very cold. I think we're being a bit harsh on them. You can see here from this picture too, the conditions aren't that perfect. And this is exactly the same time as we were looking from the helicopter. Here we have Stuart Robertson's stay calm using one of its many asymmetric spinnakers. To understand how an asymmetric spinnaker works, imagine you're sitting on a bicycle on a calm day. As soon as you start to pedal, you can feel the wind in your face. This is what we call apparent wind. The shape of the asymmetric spinnaker enhances this apparent wind and can actually make the boat go faster than the wind speed itself. In IRC Super Zero, Nicholas Sendstrom's RAN was the winner by over five minutes on corrected time. However, other boats didn't fare as well. Probably Paul Kelsey's runaway bus quarter tonner coming off the worst, losing its rig without completing a race. Here's the start of IRC Zero Race 2 and the new Kerr 39 Silk Glove takes a flying start.
Nicholas Zenstrom's ran, going full on up the beat. Look at the crew, fully hiked out. Mike Moxley and his crew on their HOD 35, which really enjoys the fresh conditions. Here we have the FAR 45 Fortis XL going boat on boat with Swan 45 Fever and Silk Glove the Kerr 39 is going to cut it really fine across these two boats. That's what we mean about having to look out for boats all around you in a compressed fleet. Two completely different styles of boat here. Uh, Fever's probably going to have the better of Fortis on the beat. But as soon as they get around the top mark, Fortis XL has a lot of downwind speed. And here we have Kathy Foster's coaching rib chasing the young sailors on the RYA keelboat program TP52. The Red Fun Lisa challenge is unique in this respect in that it allows on the water tuition, which is great for this time of the season. And the Russian TP-52 Valars has recovered from their bomber in race one and are pushing Ran hard up the beat. Ed, you race on a wide variety of boats. What do you actually think of the TP-52s? Well, the TP-52 is a very impressive machine. As it describes, it's 52 feet long. You can see from this picture here that they're pretty basic in terms of fitting layout. It's absolute minimum weight, all up weight, and they're terrifically fast downwind. As soon as these boats come around the windward mark, put up their spinnakers, they get up and planing in anything above 16 knots of breeze. They're exciting to sail, they're fun to sail, and with the bowsprit and the big spinnaker, they fly downwind.
and leading IRC Zero is Sean Froelich's Far 45 Exabyte 4. Unfortunately, a broken spinnaker pole means that they decided to retire from racing. Nick Hayes, DK46, dark and steamy, having a much better second race, having been minutes late for the start of race one. The way the big deal here is that there are a wide variety of boats sailing in this regatta, as we can see from this picture. And they're all different types of cruiser racers, and the IRC rule gives them the opportunity to race around the course and every one of them have a chance of winning. They're all going at different speeds, they all have different size sails, but IRC seems to sort that out and gives them all an equal opportunity of winning. Yeah, I think that's very true, Eddie. I mean, everybody has a complaint about their handicap, but at the end of the day, when you see a top-class fleet, it's usually seconds that separate the top boats on corrected time which is an indication that the handicap system is pretty fair. RYA selection panel are looking at the Red Funnel Easter Challenge to see how the competitors fare. The J109 is a production boat, but over the years it has proved to be extremely competitive under the IRC handicap. There are seven J109s racing here at Easter, and Adrian Lower's Jaguar of Burnham is hoping to get selected for one of the three English Rolex Commodore Cup teams. On board the J109 Jaguar of Burnham, we have a great example of what can happen in a compressed fleet. They have been forced to duck a boat that has rights over them, and we can see the frantic crew action on board to avoid a collision. Here we have a group of boats coming up to the top mark and concentrate on the second group of three. The two leading boats in this pack go for early hoist on the kite. One of them gets in a lot of trouble and the other one doesn't fare much better. We see here the middle boat of these uh, three running down winds got a wine glass in it. Bit of a problem here, Louis. They, they need to identify this as quickly as possible, drop the halyard and then start pulling down on one of the uh, corners of the sail.
Eddie. East has come early this year, but there seems to have been a very good turnout. The number of entries is very pleasing because I think it uh, it's a mark of the interest in offshore sailing in the UK and what we can expect for future events in the summer. And as you know, Rock run a lot of events. I mean, we've got 17, I think it is, on our calendar. They're all under the Rock organisation, or we work with other events to put the Rock stamp on it. And I think the fact that we've got 83 entries here means that we'll get really good turnout in the rest of the season. Well, I'm afraid that's all for now, but we've had a blast at the Red Funnel Easter Challenge. Stay tuned to Boats on TV for more action.